Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. As you will have clearly gathered from the title of this video, I have decided to talk about a very important topic, the topic of the historical figure of the ninja. Now this is probably one of the most misunderstood and butchered historical figures of the history of mankind. Of course the reason being the lack of actual interest towards free all historical data, because most of the data and information that people gather on the topic of the ninja come from either anime, manga, video games and Hollywood. But luckily it seems like the, quite a few people are starting to be more like you, noble ones, so being interested in real academic approach, wanted to know real historical, the real historical figure of the ninja. So upon recent evidential proof I'd expect the situation to possibly change, if I'm allowed to split infinitives to possibly change, which I believe I technically am now. Of course, one of the most famous infinity splits of all time came in the introductory lines of Star Trek, to boldly go. I think if the writers of a popular American television series can get away with it for 40 years, then really any of us YouTubers can. Now for the purposes of this video, I've decided to suggest a whole variety of myths and, and misconceptions to debunk together in order to get a virtually perfect perspective to three-dimensionally pinpoint into history what the ninja actually were. And also, I will give you an overall understanding of all the Japanese characters that have to do with the figure of the ninja. So if you have any questions related to the um, topic of the ninja, that, or perhaps you want to know something that I haven't talked about in this video, please remember to comment below. So, in other words, this is going to be another debunking video. Luckily, recently, my debunking videos have been quite popular, and I would like to thank all of you for that. Thank you for your support. Without you, I wouldn't be here. It's great that you're interested in culture, history, and language. Keep being amazing, noble ones. All right, then, let's dive in history and understand who the ninjas were. What was a ninja? A ninja was a ninja an assassin occasionally but most of the times a ninja has to be understood as a spy that's what a ninja is he is a spy as a matter of fact if we examine the actual meaning of the characters composing the word ninja the second one on the right means person but the first one is the one that probably gives us more information so let's examine it the ideogram is a compound of two characters the first one mean meaning knife and the second one meaning heart so we could translate it as suffer being stabbed in the heart with a knife so the whole concept of endurance comes from this concept so to bear to suffer through something difficult that's the etymology of the term it can also be translated as patience sometimes in japanese gains that meaning including stealth so to make things clear in japanese you have two possible pronunciations the so-called on yomi and the kung yomi. These are two kinds of pronunciation which sometimes have many different possible pronunciation within their realm. Now the kung yomi is the original Japanese sound pronunciation and the on yomi is a Japanese pronunciation which comes from the original Chinese reading of the characters considering that the ideograms that Japanese the characters the Japanese use are originally Chinese. So shinobi no mono would be the original Japanese kun yomi. Ninja is the Japanese on yomi, which comes from the Chinese reading. To have an overall understanding, let's also see the actual original Mandarin Chinese reading. The first character is read when you read it alone. You read it ren, ren. The second one you read it zhe, zhe. They are both in the third tone. But when you put two third tones together in Mandarin Chinese, the first one becomes a second tone. So the actual reading will be renjie, renjie. So to hear them all together again, shinobi no mono, ninja, renjie. So we can see how the Chinese zhe became ja in Japanese. As far as nin is concerned, of course it has nothing to do with ren, but consider that ren is the modern Mandarin Chinese reading. Um, many onyomi come from, originate from very ancient ways of read characters in Chinese and also from different areas of China. But for now I will stop here because otherwise the whole video will be just a linguistic video. Let's continue with the actual historical ninja. Now I would like to begin from the actual figure of the ninja, which is probably one of the most famous things that people that come in mind when you think of the ninja, the whole the black uniform, 
that they are wearing, which of course has no historical foundation. But the fact that it's black, though, because in the internet there are a lot, to, basically to different people. You have people who support and trying to defend this concept here, and people are trying to debunk it, and sometimes I think take it too far. We can't really say the ninjas have never used black as their clothing. We, we don't know that. But it is true that um, most likely black wasn't it is true that it's very unlikely the most ninjas wore black and definitely was not the uh, black karate suit. That's not the case, or the karategi, to actually use the Japanese term. So that's not the case. Um, but the concept of the mask is not completely wrong. And also the, the idea of, of a black kind of clothing, um, for example, some kind of um, kimono or yukata or hakama are not completely debunkable. So reality here lies in between these two concepts because first of all it is true that black was very difficult colour to um, to find in, in, in the lower classes in Japan meaning that in order to dye your clothing black you actually needed to first dye it cloth with indigo or deep red in order to get dark black. Naturally the extra step meant that black clothing was more expensive than to manufacture so it does not mean that black clothing did not exist in Japan it did um, but it was more expensive so probably not all ninjas wore black also if you go to Iga or Koga in the actual museum in Japan these two cities being quite famous for having uh, ninja clans it appears if such a thing actually existed they do propose this concept of having actually blue dark blue at ninjas as that would probably be an easier color to to wear quite common so the concept is wearing black black so it's not completely wrong but most of the times probably they would have worn other colors for example red, red yellow white and dark blue why would they be wearing these because these were very common colors worn by other people the best way to actually mingle among people would be to be dressed just like them so not an actual ninja suit but wearing normal clothing in even quite bright colors unless we're doing some infiltration mission now in the internet the mask has been attacked a lot by people who are trying to debunk this concept of the fake ninja which is true that the, the whole ninja suit is with the mask is isn't accurate but it is possible that some ninjas did use masks for the simple reason that people in the edo edo period so we're talking about the 17th century to the 19th century um did wear masks for the simple reason that most of the times Japanese did go to, for, for example, gambling or to the quarters of pleasure, so-called. Um, so in these cases, most of the people did not want to be recognized and wore masks. So actually wearing a mask was not um, so strange. And, and again, a ninja would try to dress up as many people do. As a matter of fact, there was uh, in the Edo period at a certain time, at a certain point, the shogun trying to ban masks as they had become too popular. So when we talk about ninjas with masks, probably for a certain period of time in certain situations, it could be possible the ninjas used a whole variety of possible masks. But again, the best idea that we can have of a ninja would be the, uh, someone dressed like a samurai, someone dressed like a monk, someone dressed like a merchant. So that would be the best way to mingle. That would be the best way to not be recognized in order to spy on the enemy. Also, another important misconception is this idea that ninja and samurai were sworn enemies. A samurai could also be a ninja in the same time, at the same time. The difference between samurai and ninja in feudal Japan is very blurry and sometimes it's very difficult also to understand if a historical person is actually a samurai or a ninja. For example, the Hattori clan, um, it's famous today, Hattori Hanzo, um, who is very famous to be a ninja during the Tok during Tokugawa Ieyasu's period, but he was also a samurai. So some of the ninjas could be samurai, some of the samurai could also be ninja, um, it really depends. This line has been drawn by two things, Hollywood, because you always have to have the villain and the hero, and also Japanese theatrical representations such as Kabuki, which I will explain a little bit more in this video later on. But let's continue talking about the ninja for now. As I have talking about the ninja equipment, as I have already talked in other videos, um, the ninja to did not exist we do not have historical proof about that i do understand that there are some historians who are trying to find proofs of that but we do not have enough proofs of a straight a straight blade a shorter straight blade 
with a square. And even if we did find a sword like that, it would probably still not be an exclusive sword for ninjas. Because if that would be the if that were the case, then it would be very easy to identify a ninja just by his weapon. So even if such a weapon existed, uh, which I'm not aware of any proof, it's not actual historical validated historical proof even if such a weapon would have existed it probably would have been just one of many possible weapons that any ninjas could have used during his operations including for example uh, katana just like the samurai shuriken refers to basically any throwing weapon not only the the actual metal stars but i have to say that nunchaku sai tonfa and chopsticks do not are not part of a, of, of the arsenal of a ninja Mostly because these weapons actually, first of all, belonged to the actual culture of Okinawa. So in mainland Japan, they weren't even that common. Secondly, they started to become more popular after the decline of the ninja, and they were never really considered very effective weapons. As a matter of fact, there is no formal kata concerning nunchaku or any of these weapon of these of these weapons because they were more training weapons rather than actual real combat weapons, as a sai or a nunchaku would have no chance against a katana. Now, going back to the actual theatrical representations where some of the myths come from that I was talking about earlier in the video, um, kabuki is a classical Japanese dance drama, and there are many different kinds of characters in this, in this uh, drama that take place and that people were accustomed to. The three characters you actually seen, the one in the left is means sing, the one in the, in the middle means dance, and the one on the right means skill. So we could translate it as the art of singing and dancing. So Kabuki again began in 1603, and there were many different kinds of characters that could be portrayed in a Kabuki representation. For example, samurai, um, daimyo, thieves, people, and also ninja. Now, Dr. Stephen Turnbull, a historian specialising in Eastern military history, suggested a theory that the all-black version of the ninja originated in Kabuki theatre. Now, this is not completely, it's, it's a bit of an unfounded hypothesis, so it's still an hypothesis, not 100% sure, but it would make sense. Why? Because in the Kabuki theatre, the stagehands who were working in the theatre would be dressed in all black while moving props, for example, around the stage because the audience of course could see them but they were all black in order to tell the audience that they were not part of the story so they were invisible so a ninja character would dress in the same way uh, because it was a good way to let people know that he he was supposed to be invisible until he actually drew the weapon and then everyone would be surprised um, as they would understand that he was actually part of the play Alright then, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you did, please thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't for more content from the Metatron. Thank you very much for watching and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.